Hello again, welcome back. In our last lecture, we talked a little bit about entropy and what entropy is, and we computed the entropy of a couple of languages. We're going to continue with that discussion in this lecture. Okay, so I gave you an example last time of the entropy of a very simple language. Suppose you have a coin that's unbalanced in such a way that it rolls heads three times as often as it rolls tails. Okay, so that's a language with two symbols, heads and tails. And heads has probability three-fourths, and tails has probability one-fourth. Okay, so then we plug those numbers into our entropy formula, and we came up with a number of 0.811. Now, what does that mean? That means for this language, the best you can ever do is an encoding which will give you, on average, 0.811 bits per symbol. You can't do any better than that. It's theoretically impossible. The question, though, is, you know, I'm flipping a coin, I get heads and tails, how could I ever do better than one bit, right? Well, you couldn't if you were flipping the coin and sending the result, flip the coin and send the result, because you got to send one bit in that case, and so we'll have to be a little more clever. So what do we do? Well, think about waiting a bit instead of sending the result. Each time you flip the coin, wait till you've flipped it twice, okay? So effectively, we can think of that as our experiment now, instead of flipping the coin once, it's flipping it twice. And now, instead of a language with two symbols, we effectively have a language with four symbols. Right? We've got the symbol HH, HT, TH, and TT. Now, clearly those are related to the other language, but uh, you get the point. Anyway, so what's the probabilities of those? Well, HH has probability 9 sixteenths. Why? Because each time you flip that coin, uh, each flip is independent of the other flips, and so you get a head three-fourths of the time, and so when you have two independent events, you get the probability of that combination by multiplying the probabilities of the individual events. So three-fourths times three-fourths is nine-sixteenths. Okay, and the same HT is three-sixteenths, and TH is three-sixteenths, and TT is one-sixteenth. Just multiply the probabilities. Okay, so now that we've got that, what do we do with that? Well. We want, recall, we want to give uh, the, the most efficient encoding to the thing that occurs the most often. And for our little language here, that's HH. That has probability 9 sixteenths, so we'll give that an encoding of 0, and so on. You see the code there on the table. Um, okay, so what do we do? Well, think about an experiment in which you do 32 flips of the coin. That's 16 of these two flips, we'll call them. Okay, well, how often are you going to get HH on average in 16 of these experiments? Well, the probability is 9 sixteenths, and what that probability means is that on average you'll get 9 of these out of 16 events, okay? And the same, you know, HT is 3 sixteenths, and so you'll get 3 of them on average. Now, of course, every time you roll, roll this or flip this coin, uh, for a sequence of 32 times, you're not going to get exactly these proportions. But in the long run, you'll get, on average, these proportions. Okay, so that means you'll get, on average, 9 HH, 3 HTs, 3 TH, and 1 TT out of 16 of these two flip experiments. Okay, so given our encoding then, uh, we can build this table. And notice that we get HH on an average of nine times, and we're using one bit for each time. So that means for these 16 big experiments, we're going to get, you're going to use nine bits for HHs. For HT, we use, we see that three times, and we use two bits each time, so we'll use six bits, and so on. So you build this table, and we add all that up, and we get 27 bits. So what does that say? It says that on average, for this encoding, for 16 of these big experiments, or 32 of our flips, we're going to use 27 bits. And remember, for the naive encoding, we're just going to use one bit per flip, which is 32. So the relationship between 27 and 32 is, or the ratio, is 0.844. So that's the efficiency of this new encoding. And you see that's better than using one bit per flip. Uh, it's not quite to the entropy, but it's pretty close, okay? So could we do better? Yeah, we could, we could save up three flips at a time, or four flips, or five. And in fact, 
you'll get closer and closer to the entropy the longer your sequence that you're encoding. Uh, will we ever get there entirely? Probably not, right? Because the entropy is the limit of this process, and we'd have to encode, you know, vastly long sequences of these things to get to there. Okay, so let's see if you, if you understood what we did here by, I'll, I'll give you a homework experiment to do, or homework exercise. Suppose you have a six-sided die, right? So it's, it's numbered from one to six on the sides, and one and two are equally likely, two and three are equally likely, four and five are equally likely, but one is twice as often as three, and three is three times as often as five. So you could, you could build a, a chart, as we did, with the probabilities of all these things. Make sure they add up to one um, for the six symbols in our language. And then what's the naive encoding for that language? Well, we've got six possibilities, so we're going to have to use three bits for the naive encoding. Right? That'll be 0, 0, 0 down to 1, 0, 1, I guess. Uh, so what's the entropy of the language? Well, you just plug those probabilities into the formula and crank it out. Uh, could you find an encoding which is more efficient than the naive encoding? Hopefully you could. And finally, give an, give an argument that the encoding you came up with is more efficient than the naive encoding. That is, uses fewer on average than three bits per symbol. Okay, hopefully you can, you can figure this out. Uh, but here's a hint. There isn't any need in this case to encode sequences of roles. You can do it with just encoding one roll at a time. Okay, so what have we said in this uh, lecture? We said that computing the entropy of a language gives us a lower bound on the efficiency of any encoding for the language. And we can approach that often arbitrarily closely, but sometimes we can't get there entirely. And building that encoding, uh, an efficient encoding, requires some ingenuity. We may have to encode sequences of events, or we may have to have come up with a clever encoding. We have to use something like Huffman encoding. But we can, we can find better and better encodings. Thank you.